subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The government is reported to be setting up development finance institutions to finance infrastructure. What is the purpose of these institutions and what is the problem that it is trying to solve? The fundamental problem that India has faced in financing infrastructure is that we've tried to get banks to fund infrastructure projects. While this was started in about 2009 and 10, by 2011 and 12, this strategy ran into trouble. Banks have what is typically called a maturity mismatch. That is that it takes de- banks take deposits uh, from people like us and we can withdraw our money at any point of time. But on the other side, when banks lend, particularly for infrastructure projects, then that lending is for the long term. The projects might take three years, five years, 10 years, or even longer sometimes. And especially if they get stuck, if there is uh, there are problems due to environmental clearances or somebody uh, in rural areas uh, is not willing to sell or give up their farmlands, then these pro- uh, projects can run into long delays. And that's what happened in around uh, from about 2011 12 to about 2013 14 particularly when a lot of projects infrastructure projects got stalled that led to problems in the balance sheets of banks banks got non performing uh, their assets uh, or their these loans became non performing and then the government was stuck with trying to either recapitalize them or rbi came up with a number of schemes trying to restructure these loans but that wasn't very successful so at the end of the day, it has been understood that what we were trying, uh, that is bank financing for infrastructure projects, doesn't really work. And that is where this idea of the development finance institution or institutions which lend to infrastructure projects came up. These would be institutions that do not take deposits because, you know, depositors can want their money back at any point of time. And that is why there are regu- there would be uh, banking regulations which would require them to hold capital and so on. And the whole problem of non-performing assets could come up again. What would these development finance in- institutions do? They would borrow, uh, for example, through bonds. Now, this is not an idea that is new. It's an idea that has been tried, uh, particularly for industrial financing, for rural financing areas, which were priority areas for the government, but which were not getting loans. The government uh, primarily gave subsidized credit. So sometimes you'll see these uh, tax free bonds for infrastructure projects or where uh, these uh, bonds are allowed to be held uh, as uh, the SLR requirements, in the SLR requirements which banks have, that is the statutory liquidity ratio requirements. Now, we've, uh, in my column this week, my co-author Radhika Pandey and I have discussed uh, this issue in length and what was India's experience with these development finance institutions, starting right from, you know, the IDBI, ICICI, and a number of institutions which were created throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s. Primarily, all of them ran into trouble sooner or later some of them are still around but they're getting and they're getting subsidized credit but many of them ran into trouble and various rbi committees and government committees recommended that they be turned into banks so that instead of raising capital from the government they should be able to raise deposits but then that again brings us back to the problem of the maturity mismatch that banks have So the idea now is that they would raise capital, perhaps through the bond market, and then they would be able to lend further onto infrastructure and infrastructure projects, and they would not have that maturity mismatch. Uh, The one issue with this uh, plan is that giving subsidized credit uh, is not a sustainable solution for funding infrastructure projects. What you really need is to develop a bond market from where these DFIs or the development finance institutions as they are being referred to, the DFIs would be able to raise capital. Uh, 
to raise debt, uh, to raise money, which they would then on lend to uh, infrastructure projects. That is what would make them uh, sustainable. And that will, is what will make this funding model sustainable. So uh, here we argue that, yes, you know, India has huge infrastructure needs and you do need to get out of the bank financing model for infrastructure. But you need to at the same time, develop a bond market. The difficulties with India's bond market are well known. We fragment. We have a fragmented market, a government bond market on the one side and a corporate bond market on the other side. Unlike other bond markets, the successful bond markets in the world where they are integrated into one. And this is something that has been long on the agenda of the uh, government and the Reserve Bank of India setting up a public debt management agency, get, having regulatory changes and infrastructure changes in the bond market. And if the government is going to start these DFIs and hoping to raise uh, uh, debt and have a sustainable source of borrowing, then the government does need to move ahead with those reforms. Thank you for watching. This is Ila Patnaik in Elanomics. See you again next week.